As a care worker, you will come into contact with service users who are at risk of developing pressure ulcers. So you need to understand what a pressure ulcer is and how you can prevent them occurring. Over the years, pressure ulcers have been called many things, including bed sores, decubitus ulcers, and pressure sores. However, today we simply call them pressure ulcers. Let us start by looking at the anatomy of the skin. We need to understand the structure of the skin and its blood supply so that we can comprehend the effects of pressure on the skin. The outside layer of the skin is called the epidermis. The epidermis consists of layers of cells packed tightly together that act as a physical barrier to protect our bodies. The epidermis is continually being rubbed away by movement and clothes, but yet it replaces itself every 28 days. Below the epidermis, there is another layer, which is called the dermis. The dermis is the living part of the skin that contains blood vessels, sweat glands, hair follicles and nerve endings. The dermis is four times the thickness of the epidermis. It has the ability to expand and contract, for example during pregnancy. Below the dermis is a layer of fat that provides us with padding and insulation. If we go even deeper than the dermis, then we find muscle tissue and under that there is bone. Pressure ulcers are caused by the application of pressure to the skin. Shear and friction are other ways we describe the pressure. We will now look at what happens to the skin once pressure is applied. If pressure is applied to the outside of the skin, the blood vessels will become squashed between the outside object and the underlying bone. This is an example of direct pressure and you can see how the blood vessels are being squashed. At first, the vessels are able to protect themselves and remain open. However, if the pressure is great enough and applied for long enough, then the vessels will collapse. And since the skin is supplied with oxygen and nutrients by those vessels, it will die. It was previously thought that it took two hours for a pressure ulcer to develop. However, this is a myth, which is why you may have seen service users repositioned every two hours when they are in bed. In fact, the amount of time it takes for a pressure ulcer to develop is different for each individual. If you sit on your hands, you can experience pressure since your hands are being squashed between the pressure from the chair and your pelvic bones. However, pressure can be applied in different ways to the skin. If pressure is applied at an angle, it is called a shearing force. Service users can experience shearing forces if they slide down when sitting in a chair, for example. This drags their skin, the blood vessels become kinked, and then this blocks off the supply of blood to the skin. If pressure is applied back and forth over the skin, it is called a friction force. Can you think back to the layers of the skin? The top layer, the epidermis, is connected to the lower layer, the dermis by fibres that form hooks. As we age, these hooks become fewer and weaker. You may have seen a colleague rubbing or massaging a service user's skin. This is because it was previously thought that this would improve circulation to the skin. This is now identified as bad practice because it is applying a friction force to their skin and this can damage and break fragile skin. So now we understand that there are three causes of pressure ulcers direct pressure, shear, and friction. 